Hello, YouTube. Let's talk about the moon a little more because it ever comes up with new unusual phenomena and mysteries. You see, now we know that the moon's surface formed at least 40 million years earlier than previously thought, according to a new study of an ancient crystal embedded in rock collected by Apollo 17 astronauts. For years, scientists have, for the most part, agreed that about 4.5 billion years ago, a giant Mars-sized object called Theia slammed into the very young Earth, ejecting hot debris that formed the Moon. The leading hypothesis for the formation of the Earth-Moon system is the giant impact hypothesis, where a Mars-sized object collided with the growing proto-Earth, to put it in scientific terms, which may have resulted in a globally molten moon known as the Lunar Magma Ocean. But there was no agreement as to the age of the moon. Well, the crystallization ages of lunar samples provide critical constraints on the minimum formation age of the moon and its early evolution. The new atom-by-atom atom analysis of the 4.46 billion years old lunar crystal pushes back the timeline for when the molten moon solidified by 40 million years. According to the study published in the journal Geochemical Perspective Letters in late October 2023. But it does not mean we now know the age of the moon and scientists should not stop looking. When the moon first coalesced, the theory goes it was covered in an ocean of roiling magma. Lunar zircon crystals are like cosmic timepieces that started ticking. Once that magma ocean cooled and actually solidified, zircon crystals take up radioactive uranium as an impurity, which decays over time into lead. By comparing the ratios of different forms of lead and uranium atoms, called isotopes, in the sample, scientists can estimate its age. In 2021, a team of cosmochemists, led by uh, Bidong Zhang, who is now a researcher at, at the University of California in Los Angeles, and by Audrey Bouvier at the University of Beirut in Germany, they published a paper showing that zircon crystals embedded in the Apollo 17 moon rock might be the oldest yet discovered at 4.446 billion years old. But also they added uh, caveats and disclaimers. The problem for Bi Dong Zhang was that he could not be as sure as he needed to be that the date was accurate. You see, lead can move around within zir zircon crystals and it could get stuck in clusters like raisins and baking bread, potentially meaning that when researchers measure the ratio of the lead isotopes, they might actually overcount it if they hit a cluster, coming up with actually inaccurate date. So when the team first submitted, first submitted the results to a journal, According to Zheng, they were criticized because the analysis couldn't rule out this alternative explanation. So when they did eventually publish the results, uh, he said that um, they kind of put the findings in a cautious, low-key way because of such critiques. And <clears throat> it's been controversial for the last 50 years, since the 1970s, when the astronauts brought back the samples from the moon, according to Zhang, um, Apollo rocks were very consistent and 4.3 billion years old. So they were questioned, you know, the scientists, why would this age be different? To respond to the critics, his 
colleagues and him joined in an effort to verify the age of the crystal using a technique called atom probe tomography, which is more commonly used in materials science for steel failure analysis or the semiconductor research. With this technique, the scientists were able to take samples from a tiny sliver of one of the crystals and use a laser beam to evaporate the atoms one by one and identify them, ruling out that the lead atoms had clustered within the crystal. So the problem facing lunar scientists is that the samples they analyze are about 100 million years apart in age. The new finds suggest that magma ocean crystallized 4.46 billion years ago. Meanwhile, other types of lunar rock have dates of about 4.35 billion years ago, suggesting that the magma ocean stuck around for another 100 million years. How big an issue that presents, it depends on who you ask among scientists. And Jenk pointed out to the possibility that there were secondary events after the formation of the moon, for example, laser impacts, that could have heated the younger rocks to high temperatures and reset their clocks. Now, Benjamin Wise, a planetary scientist at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, said that newer missions to the moon will bring more samples back from the moon and from different spots, and that might help clarify the timeline of the moon's origins, or maybe make it even more complicated, because we don't know what they'll bring back from the moon. I also read the following. The lead isotopes analyzed in the new study indicated a sample age of 4.46 billion years, which means that the moon has the same age. On one hand, this result makes the hypothesis about the formation of the moon after a single collision much more plausible. On the other hand, the new age of the moon does not necessarily mean that it was formed at this moment. Zircons could get to the moon with material ejected from the Earth's surface or together with meteorites. Um, I also want to tell you something about another interesting uh, news item. Astronomers have found another piece of the moon in Earth orbit. Astronomers have found another proof that the near-Earth asteroid, Kamo Alewa, is a breakaway piece of the moon. The discovery could have important implications for our understanding of the origin and evolution of the solar system. That strange asteroid, asteroid Kamo Alewa was discovered in the year 2016 and has been of interest to scientists ever since. 469219-Kamo-O-Alewa is a very small asteroid, fast rotator and near-Earth objector of the Apollo group, approximately 40 to 100 meters or 130 to 330 feet in diameter. At present, it is a quasi-satellite of Earth and currently the second smallest, closest, and most stable known such quasi-satellite. Its unusual composition and shape suggested that it could be associated with the moon. However, only recently have astronomers been able to confirm this hypothesis. The researchers analyzed the composition of the asteroid and compared it with samples of lunar soil brought from the moon by the astronauts of the Apollo mission. It turned out that the composition of these two objects is almost identical. This indicates that the Kamo Alewa asteroid is indeed an ejected piece of the moon. So, to confirm this hypothesis, modern scientists have used computer models to recreate the process of the asteroid formation. They simulated asteroid impacts on the moon and the gravitational forces that affected the rock ejections. As a result of the study, they came to the conclusion that some fragments could well fall 
into near-Earth orbits since near-Earth asteroids pose a potential threat to our planet. Understanding their origin and behavior will help develop more effective methods of protection against possible collisions. Further research will be aimed at determining the time of the collision that led to the ejection of a piece of the Moon into the near-Earth orbit. Piece by piece, news items by news items, discovery by discovery, we're getting more information about the Moon. And I've had a number of videos about our very strange natural or unnatural satellite because I presented the idea about the Moon being an artificially created celestial object. And I'll bring you more interesting information, sci you know, strictly scientific and otherwise, uh, because uh, human beings have been fascinated with the moon for millennia, and maybe not only the human beings. Thank you for your attention to my work. If you can support my research, you'll find the links on how to do it in the description to this video. Please like my videos. Please subscribe to my channel. Please tell others.